ahead with that. Perfect. All right. Good. So yes, thank you again uh, for joining uh, our closing ceremony for the Modular Open uh, Research Platform project, which was a project funded by the state of Salzburg that uh, we implemented here over the last one and a half years or so through the WIS 2025 initiative, which is managed by Innovation Salzburg. We have a representative here. Uh, welcome. And uh, I have to start right away uh, saying, first of all, my name is Jan Smedink. I'm the research um, co-director of the LBI, and I'm um, also the program uh, principal investigator for the program line, which sort of was mostly responsible for implementing this uh, at our research institute. Um, I have to excuse two people today. Sadly, first of all, our research director, uh, Professor Niebauer, on relatively short notice, couldn't make it, but sends his regards. Uh, and then also, sadly, um, Dr. Daniela Vuhofer is a senior postdoc with us and was instrumental in acquiring this project and running it. Sadly, uh, from yesterday until today, due to a family emergency, he cannot attend. So I will also, sadly, talk more than I intended to <laughs> and pick up some of Daniela's bits um, but yeah, we can only try and uh, do this um, as well as possible. So um, yeah, we want to uh, close down uh, this project which was for the development of a research infrastructure and we will tell you all about it um, in this session. Um, so first of all, I want to give you the motivation why we set out uh, to do this project again. And um, imagine you are a researcher and you want to, um, you know, do something about uh, physical inactivity and say you develop an app by chance, like ours, we developed an active plan application, which allows you to do activity plans in this case, in the, uh, in the context of cardiovascular rehabilitation and prevention. And you want to make sure that you can study this and understand it well, uh, and even uh, potentially figure out the workings and the and, and how, what an impact it can have over a longer term, uh, sort of, yeah, accompanying people uh, through, I don't know, multiple months of using it. Uh, and then every now and then you want to maybe ask a questionnaire and maybe you also want throughout some sort of objectifying measure of physical activity. So you want to track, for example, the heart rate. Um, right now, if you want to do that, the tools are definitely there, but very often we still see that a custom setup is built for every such study, and this can be very costly. It can be prohibitive sometimes. Um, so the modular open research uh, platform set out to tackle this challenge and make it easier and more achievable to implement such studies that accompany people throughout day-to-day -day living with sort of high frequency measures, be that self-reported measures through questionnaires or surveys or measures taken from wearable devices or from the mobile phone, for example, or from other applications for that matter. So. Yeah, um, that was sort of straight out our motivation uh, to to study and understand, uh, you know, particular working patterns with that other application that we built. Other people may choose to use this tool for other purposes, uh, for just, for example, for just collecting observational data or doing other things with it. So anyway, it's about these recurrent needs about integrating sensors and other uh, research data collecting collection, um, storing that and even being able to look at what is coming in in near real time and being able to react to it. So we see an example of a study, how it could be set up um, here on the presentation. Uh, somebody wants to do something about physical activity, measures that and, and may even send out uh, interventions based on, I don't know, an observed heart rate being very low over a long period of time. Just a silly, very simple example. So this project, even before um, we went and uh, uh, got into the process of running this as a, as a third party funded um, research infrastructure development project, um, we sort of uh, worked together with uh, partners and uh, stakeholders at the LBI to see how would such a modular open research platform need to function? What sort of uh, repeating recurring require requirements or challenges are there, like just managing a study, even just getting people on board, telling them like, this is the fourth day of your study participation. And are you okay with us collecting that data? This sort of thing, it sounds simple, but it really adds up. Um, so um, yeah, 
And then, of course, integrating all these data sources is a challenge, and we want to do this in a way that is sustainable, very flexible in the way that the system works, cost-efficient, reliable, it has to have data security. So once you put all that up, you know why making this easier to repeat is a, a big gain, a big win in principle. So there was this objective of uh, putting up uh, an infrastructure that that can be something that others can also work with or use uh, for themselves uh, for such purposes. Uh, so this was from the get go um, implemented as a project that can both be run and hosted, at least with with our partners and institutions that would like to work with us. Uh, where where we also said we want to make eventually the source code available so that others can use that and run that for their own purposes. And uh, yeah, there was a longer implementation process for this. So the state of Salzburg, uh, we were able to convince Salzburg uh, that this is a good idea to have, and that this is something that the uh, that we that a lot of uh, other organizations, not just us here in Salzburg, could benefit from. Um, so there was a generous funding provided, um, which is really mainly an implementation contract, and we added a lot of our staff time to make this project real on top. Um, and uh, the original process, uh, because the large project volume uh, was a juried competition, so we put together a, a stellar jury of um, uh, technical experts, psychological experts, research experts to uh, select from uh, sort of um, yeah, competition entry. So we defined a competition to, to do the first steps of defining and implementing the design of such a platform. And then we asked for submissions and we got uh, three submissions that were really, really high quality, which the jury spent a lot of time looking at. And we had one clear and honest winner, which is Rettling GmbH uh, from Salzburg, who's also represented here, maybe quick raise of hands uh, for the Rettling uh, representatives. Um, so that was very nice to see. It turned out to be a local company because we also had, for example, submission from the Netherlands and so on. So um, strong call for that. Um, and that was a selection process, which also got us to implementing sort of about half of the sort of how do you actually implement such a platform based on the very basic requirements, because the jury process already asked the companies to submit uh, an inter like a prototype, visual prototype or interactive prototype Um so we hit the ground running and got into a very, very agile development process uh, together with Redlink GmbH. And um, yeah, this was uh, still a challenging software project. You will see in a second just the first impression of the sort of bells and whistles and features of the system. And you can then clearly say this is not, you know, just, I don't know, a simple app or something like that. This is a really com complex and, and ambitious um, project. So... Uh, the implementation period was originally planned for one year. We took a little bit longer than that, but we are very happy that we have now something that is really running and working quite nicely and that people can start using. Yes, throughout the development journey, we didn't just feed in requirements that we had collected in the beginning, but we also sort of kept a series of stakeholder involvement efforts inspired by the Delphi method, because we are working a lot here with experts who are either technical experts or medical experts. They have even less time than the te technical experts, let me tell you. So Delphi can be a nice um, process. Uh, in terms of uh, it making, usually it's asynchronous. So you send out a set of questions for expert involvement um, periodically and then get some feedback and then you integrate that feedback and then you go for a next round. So far, that is just iterative development. The little bit interesting component about this is that at the beginning of each sort of step, you feedback on the prior steps with your takeaway messages and you also get some validation again, are these takeaway messages actually going in the direction um, that makes sense to you? Are we making sense of what you said in the right way, basically? And uh, we we carried out a couple of uh, steps, uh, so four steps throughout, and we did uh, another workshop uh, today that goes into this sort of stakeholder integration effort uh, that really helped us um, yeah, gather the, the very broad set uh, of requirements that people might have for such studies. And uh, here we are now, we do have a uh, modular open research platform. So what is that even? Just to be clear, um, it, it has two simple key components to you as the user. Um, uh, there is a web application that is meant to be facing professionals, people who may want to set up a study or evaluate a digital health application. And they can use that to say, okay, I need to get 20 people into some observation assessment study over a duration of X weeks. Maybe they are in different groups, so I have some 
group gets application version A, another group gets application version B, and another group gets no application, your typical sort of research setup that would be. And you can configure all that and manage also what sort of data is collected. We call that observations on the platform. And then a uh, couple of other things, and I'll show that in a demo in a second. And then there's a companion application for participants that they can download and then get a token to participate in the study. And it neatly sort of with ideally as little uh, involvement required as possible uh, sort of leads them through participation of that effort uh, throughout their daily living. And this application exists for Android and iOS. So let's look at what some of that actually means. So everything so far Daniela should have said. Now we're switching to Jan. Sorry, more Jan. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's look at the little live demo of um, how this actually looks in practice. So we can go into the platform and uh, ideally even log in. Sorry for that. So screen sharing should come back now. Okay, and we can see I'm on this manager platform that I was just talking about. And there are a couple of studies that I've been invited to in the test session, which look uh, very messy. <laughs> but I uh, did prepare a relatively clean one, I hope, uh, called More Simple Demo V1. And you can already see that there are some features here of, of giving me an impression of, of showing a description of what that study was about, the, the desired or intended start and end time. And I also have a way here to get a link that I can share, for example, with part study participants and so forth. Um, so if I click on that, I can see that uh, I can set up a study. Um, so normally you do that here in the in the interface. You can add a new study or import one from uh, from a prior export. And you can put in things like a study title, start and end date, the purpose of the study, participant information that gets displayed to participants, like what you normally get on paper. In this study, you will be asked to, I don't know, wear a wearable device for two weeks. And by the way, I consent to being okay with that. And there's an already an interesting thing that we can do here because of the modularity of the platform. We know which data capture components are collected. So this is just the sort of the, the header consent. I'm OK with participating in this study in general. And then stuff will be added in based on the observations that I select, where I need to, to provide additional consent information. Depending on, you know, you can still do your consent on paper and just say it's already sorted. But if you want to use this, this can be efficient um, already. And yeah, study end message, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I did set up this. Um, simple demo just to not annoy you with typing here. Uh, but you can see here, I set up a, a demo study where um, this is about exploring the efficacy of so-called just-in-time adaptive interventions in physical activity support, where you look at activity actually executed and you try to not just collect activity data during that period, but also help people out by sort of reminding them to stay physically active if you observe periods of inactivity. So that's a very typical type of study that we might run here at the Institute. And then of course you have some participant information. Don't worry about that. Consent information, this is a template. So I try to make it somewhat realistic, um, but uh, yeah, don't worry about the details. You need to, of course, have a point of contact in case something goes wrong for participants. And here you can already see that this is a very simple intervention study. So I have one group in the study or one study arm or intervention or treatment where people do get a just-in-time adaptive interventions. And then I have another one that gets nothing, a very classic control group. I can also add study collaborators here. I'm just me and myself. Or I could add other collaborators. Um, and the one important thing to notice here is um, while I'm lagging around and not finding the buttons is um, if I add somebody here, I can choose they are an admin, then they can do everything in the study. If they are just an operator, they can change study settings, but not see the data. If they are a viewer, they can see the study data from study participants, but not change the study setup and settings. This is required for some ambitious clinical studies. So if I set this up, then I may want to add some participants. Uh, this is not meant to manage participant details like their real world names and addresses. We assume everybody does that separately. There's also data privacy concerns about that. So this is managed, meant to manage aliases. Sometimes you see P01, P02, for example, people choose running participant numbers for their study. And uh, you get tokens that people can use to actually log into the study and participate. 
And there are some handy functions here. Ah, oh, my study is active, so I can't actually demo a lot of things. So let me pause that real quick. And then I can show how you can add new participants either one by one or with a comfort function to add multiple. And I can also then randomly assign them to groups. I can also choose to do that manually um, if I need to. Um, so this is where you can manage your participants. There's also an import export functionality. And then you get to the interesting part where you set up your observations. Uh, you can see here that a bunch of different observations, different questionnaires, survey types, uh, uh, polar verity sense measures, heart rate, there's GPS sensing from the mobile app and so forth. So you can collect what you want, uh, select what you want. And this is um, part of the modularity of the platform is that this is extensible and developer templates for that are in the source code. So um, you then can have uh, different observations. I already set up some classic stuff for such a study Yeah, a start questionnaire that is meant to be done at the very beginning, a closing questionnaire that is meant to be done at the very end. I have some sort of uh, physical activity, mobile phone accelerometry sensing throughout as a very stupid proxy for physical activity for the demo. And I have a simple questionnaire that is an ecological momentary assessment that repeats daily, which I can react to if I want to. Um, so I, yeah, normally you could add, uh, you know, um, another, uh, sensor, for example, like a heart rate sensor. And I could say here, okay, that's a heart rate sensor. I can either let that run throughout the entire study, or I can schedule in quite some detail when it should be active or not active. And I need to tell my participants why I need this data. And then I can also select in which groups that is either everybody gets this observation or measurement taken or it's just for one of the particular groups and with this we can already ni nicely do some trickery so i've you can see i've configured this here so that um, the entire study gets a start and end questionnaire that makes a whole lot of sense i also want to be able to say something at the end of the day about the physical activity levels of everybody so i'm taking that from everybody but i'm only doing the simple questionnaire which is an ecological momentary assessment in order to react to it with a jitai so i'm only doing it in that group and i will skip over integrations that is a fancy mechanism to integrate other applications via api calls if you have data from a third party application let's not go into detail but this is a bit technical uh, but enables some some nice additional things in a in a very simple study you are done now because you just want to collect data but we'd want to do a just in time adaptive intervention study which is also already a thing that many other research automation platforms cannot do so you can go here into interventions and trigger into uh, sort of interventions. This can either be sort of just regularly spaced reminders, notifications, uh, or actions on the platform, or it can be something that reacts to data. And you see that example here, um, for example, with the uh, Ima Jitai um, that I scheduled. Uh, there's a trigger that does a scheduled data check. So every now and then, I configured here actually every five minutes, it will look into the data, whether data was returned from the survey. And uh, if the person answered no, let's not go into the details of what I'm asking here, but if they answered no, I trigger a push notification that is a reminder to think about how they could implement uh, additional physical activity in their daily living. And this is only delivered to the with JITAI's uh, groups because this is such a study. And if this is all set up uh, uh, nicely, then I can uh, start my study or resume it in this case because I have started it before and we can quickly pick out a uh, token here and I need to reconnect to my smartphone to show you the screen. So let's see, we have a, a token that is not taken here. Um, so let me see if you can see the screen already. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you can see, I will enter now um, this token here. 9H, oh, I'm typing somewhere, but not where I want to type. All right, 9H224, five Z B. 
Okay, and now I'm in this little demo study and I can see all that informed consent information um, which I typed in there for people to parse um, and then the different uh, particular uh, information about the different measures in the study. And so if I'm okay with that, uh, I can join the study and I can already see that I cheated a little bit. I set it so that this ecological momentary assessment as well as the start and end questionnaire, they appear on every single day, just so I can demo this. So we can see here my plan as a study participant for November 13 is uh, do, the start, do this ecological momentary assessment, do the start and do the end questionnaire. And the mobile sensor um, collection is running in the background. It's meant to be hidden because I don't want to normally be reminded of it. You could also change that, but I can look at it here in the physical activity via the mobile phone sensor. And I can already see that it's collecting some data points since I have started participating in this study. So in my normal view, what would be important for me as a study participant, I could answer this ecological momentary assessment. That's what I said earlier. It's just a simple question. It doesn't make, matter very much whether it makes sense right now, but I can select no here and submit that. And then in, in a little while, um, this observation, uh, the, this adaptive intervention will trigger because I have responded with no here. And I can also go into more complex questionnaires. If you're a researcher, you will know tools like Lime Survey that allow you to do very complex um, questionnaires uh, to your liking. And this is nicely integrated here. So I could fill out, you know, your more like complicated starting questionnaire for a study participation. I will not do the full thing now. Um, but that then tracks into the study data record. Uh, I get all sorts of notifications here. There was one triggered for physical inactivity. So if I don't move the phone for a few minutes now, uh, it will eventually show there. I can maybe jump back here in a second. And um, yeah, I think this is what I wanted to show. In principle, you can always look at the study details again, if you're interested as a participant and also of course, choose to leave the study. Um, and you can see your contact details down here if you have a question about the study and so forth. So I hope that does give a little bit of an impression. Um, and then I can also see here, of course, on the platform, uh, whether I have uh, data incoming. Um, so for example, you can see that I just responded to this ecological momentary assessment. I think this was the user that I um, chose. So you can see that data um, incoming and there's a weird scaling issue here, but in principle, I can also see that that um, response was a no. Yeah, there you can see that. <laughs> okay, so that is a, a brief rundown of the study uh, manager and the demonstration of the features. And uh, yeah, now that we um, showed how this works a little bit, um, we wanted to say thank you to the development partner Redlink. Uh, also welcome because it was a, a yeah a, a, re a development contract obviously um, but if you would like to take a minute or two and just say something about your experience of the development process as a professional development organization being faced with uh, wild challenges that researchers come up with uh, this would be the time uh, that you could very nicely do this if you like yeah you can just speak into this i speak into this uh yeah um hello i'm thomas from redlink uh, and we are the implementation partner of the project, as Jan already said. Um, so uh, the last one and a half years um, were a great journey for us, I would say, like a journey in a foreign country. Uh, it was uh, so we are quite we have a quite good equipment. Uh, we have we have uh, um, uh, um, yeah we have a good idea how to implement uh, uh, software projects, but uh, we are not in the health domain. And uh, at the beginning, it was quite interesting, uh, interesting and intense uh, to find a common language also. Uh, so we are from the research sector already. So we did some research projects and so on. But uh, especially wording and such stuff in health is completely different. <laughs> so what, what we had in mind, actually. Um, but um, yeah, it was a, a great and intense journey, I would say. And we have um, amazing results, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, the journey is not over, I think. So there are so many ideas still in my mind and also in your mind. And as you can see on uh, from the workshop, um, there are uh, so many things to do or so many um, ideas or way, uh, ways where we can go with this um, 
um, with this uh, project um, or with additional projects. Um, yeah, thank you very much, I would say, for, for the last one and a half years and this uh, good partnership. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward um, to uh, new ideas uh, and new challenges uh, with the MORE platform. Mm -hmm. Thank you so thank much, you. really. Um, okay, thanks uh, to Redlink, really, for the effort. Um, okay, so I'll try if I can reattach this without everybody online getting their headphones blown up. Probably it was already too late. Okay, um, so... Yeah, with that said, um, this platform is now ready in a uh, in a sort of a running as an instance that we host, which our LOI stakeholders and research partners who would like to explore this and work with it and then, you know, for, for a first uh, trial project can really uh, sign into and use. Um, so contact details for that and everything are also on the flyer and also on our website. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, it is a really, really important element of this project to make the source code available to others who may want to use the platform themselves um, in, in whatever fashion, really. Um, so, um, yeah, this is what we want to do now. So we want to do a little bit of a live launch. <laughs> Uh, and a bit anticlimactic, perhaps changing something on GitHub, but uh, it's important to recognize uh, the work behind the scenes. So Ali Reza is our uh, key developer. Do you want to go and have the honors of making the platform open? <laughs> yeah, I know. You've never been more excited about a developer changing GitHub, but meet Ali Reza, who's our main developer right now on the project from the LDI side. So uh, just to demonstrate, this is a little bit the... Uh, Look, there's no, there's no chicken in this hat. So this is the more platform on GitHub, how it looks right now. Yeah. And now I need to take my hands off this and uh, give you the um, honors of changing this. <laughs> okay. So there's Hello, a everyone. digital ribbon cutting in a way. <laughs> yeah. My name is Ali Reza Pate. I'm a software developer and I have been working on more for around one and a half year. Yeah. We are going to make the project as a public uh project on github and i want to make sure i have read yes three warnings okay yeah <laughs> make this repository public and an auth authentication code oh, that coming. oh this is gonna make you wait for an auth code okay good okay fantastic so seven eight three Seven A three two eight eight two eight okay. Yeah. Try that again. That was probably a wrong number. Seven eight three seven eight 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 three two eight eight. Quick, two, eight. quick, 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 <laughs> quick. Yes, yes. Okay. So fantastic. <laughs> and if we now yeah, it's the little surprise. I will give you the other part. Yes. <laughs> the microphone. Oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So there are more sub repositories to this, which we will open in just a minute. But um, in principle, it is uh, it is there and can be used um, for your um, non commercial research projects if you'd like, uh, starting basically now. Okay. And um, yeah, I, that was the, the sort of the most important bit to get done. Uh, and I'm I'm really sorry for how much I'm talking today. Again, this is not how we planned it, but I have a little bit of a uh, uh, an element to share how excited we are uh, that we have this now and that we can't stop thinking about what else is possible. Uh, and also something that may be needed to, to really um, make this work even better. So I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about next steps and a future outlook. So first of all, it's important now to get this into use. Uh, of course, we've tried it out a lot alongside. We've run some demo studies. For, we've yeah, run some little in test studies, but very limited scale. And we are now ready to, to see this in, in use uh, with uh, multiple studies. Uh, so one study that is to launch soon is in collaboration with Andrea Geisberger from FH Campus Wien, who was here earlier today, but I think had to leave. Um, and uh, this is a, about a randomized weightless control study with, you know, an intervention period and a control that is uh, not actually run um, of uh, another application that we're building. Uh, 
active waiting where we need to figure out whether it really works as intended or not. Uh, so we'll have people use that for a while and also do a regular questionnaire collection and uh, simply also uh, making it possible that this gets run as a decentralized remote trial uh, without patient pa participants having to come in all the time or being accompanied uh, throughout um, daily living in another way. So that is a straightforward use case for a platform uh, such as more. Uh, and this is being implemented uh, uh, right now to start very, very soon. And uh, we have another use case that's already coming up, which is a little bit more complicated from a technical point of view. So the Smart PA2 study, we run a series of studies around understanding these just-in-time adaptive interventions a little bit better. What sort of underlying information for the daily context of people do you need in order to de really determine how you can help them better with implementing physical activity goals? And this study is particularly around uh, implementation intentions. So planning and replanning and saying to yourself, yes, I really want to do it and I want to do it then and then. And if it fails, then replanning rather than abandoning. That's sort of the very rough uh, everyday language concept. And uh, for this, we actually have an adaptive intervention where if people report that they were not active, they are actively asked then uh, with um, yeah uh, an intervention to replan, to double down and to, to, to make plans to really uh, implement their upcoming physical activity goals. And the delivery of all of this is through the Active Plan app, which is a completely separate application. So this needs to be integrated with more. Uh, and that is making use of API calls in the background in order to report in the responses that people report here on the interface of Active Plan, and then also to trigger the, the, um, the sort of um, yeah, intervention accordingly, uh, depending on the response. Um, so this has uh, already been in piloting and it, uh, yeah, it's also meant to start implementation in a few weeks time. I think we said November still. I'm not sure if that's, yeah, you're nodding. Uh, okay, but very, very soon we're going to run this proper. Uh, and that is a bit more of a sort of advanced use case uh, from the point of view of uh, the more platform. And we have further development steps. Uh, we know that running these studies will be further testing. Hopefully everything will work quite well. We are feeling well enough right now to say, yes, you should actually use it. Uh, but there may be an issue here or there to fix. Um, we know that it can be a challenge right now for researchers or other professionals who use the platform to really see, you can schedule quite complex things. And it's a bit complicated to see how will this actually unfold as a timeline. And if you're configuring a study for a year, you don't want to get this wrong. Yes, you can pause it and fix it, but sometimes in research, things, certain things that may then be too late. Uh, so we need a little bit of a better overview um, of what's coming up. We need more customization about the scheduling of events. Is that relative to the study start point uh, time that I determine in the interface or relative to individual study starting times? This is something which is already being implemented, um, again, in collaboration with Redlink. Uh, we want more flexible triggering of actions as events on the platform. So less time-based checks, more event-based checks, um, a bit more visual data monitoring. This is a bit rudimentary right now. You can look at the data that's coming in. That's incredibly important for researchers. Is it actually working? Is it get, getting the data that it needs to be getting? But that could be more comfortable. And um, yeah, we also have very simple decision-making mechanisms in there for the adaptive interventions right now, uh, where we really see, at least for our research purposes, we want to uh, make this a little bit more capable. And then also, I don't know how much you know about the LBI DHP, but we have various other things going on at this research institute. And uh, there's a whole um, program line led by Dr. Rada Hussein about um, data interoperability and uh, yeah, sort of really making healthcare data work and flow better. And this is also something um, where we, we have already uh, clear plans and first steps of working towards uh, data interoperability for more. The key pathway there will be uh, to set up a fire gateway so that data from more can be expressed in the fire standard, which is a sort of upcoming uh, international standard for representing health data, also uh, quite complex health data. And so the idea is that uh, more can then put out data that is collected through more in fire and it can also integrate fire formatted data from other sources which makes this incredibly capable for example then you can connect it to healthcare and inf hospital information systems um, from a technical point of view there are regulatory things uh, that uh, such a platform cannot sort in a sort of catch-all manner but um, yeah 
And also from our own perspective in our institute, uh, I've shown you a little bit, what is happening? Um, <clears throat> I showed you just a second ago the, um, uh, the, the active plan tool. And we do uh, implement a lot of other digital technologies that by and large are meant to accompany people through sort of rehabilitation or secondary prevention journeys. Uh, mainly we work with cardiac uh, rehabilitation as a use case, not only, but we develop these tools that are meant to support people throughout sort of longer term health efforts. Uh, various tools, really, I've shown you just, uh, which one did I show? Oh, active waiting, which is here, and active plan tool. We do other ones as well. And they, we, we really, they sort of, in our concept, all integrate. And we need to understand how accompanying health journeys with such tooling really works for people. And this is how like more can be like a longitudinal observation platform where we integrate with these efforts to understand how they're working. And we have the data interoperability bit um, visualized down there. Sorry for jumping out of screen for the people online, but that was talking about the two yellow bits down there. Um, so, so that is an interesting uh, opportunity for us. And not only for us, we see the space of digital health technologies really growing quite rapidly still uh, just picking out you know some some of uh, research that that uh, we collaborated on uh, together with uh, uh, another LBI and and further collaborators uh, and this picks out uh, is a bibliographic analysis and it picks out uh, keywords from papers uh, in cardio cardiology research um, and you can see if you look at the the sort of the space around 2006, the main keywords in papers were around uh, sort of, yeah, medical terms. <laughs> and as time advances to 2016, it runs from right to left. It's a bit counterintuitive. But if you get into this area, you see a sort of much more digital, healthy uh, uh, terms. Yeah, um, uh, data collection, digital technology, smartphones, and so forth. So, yeah, digital health is really um, set to stay and set to grow still. And we can see that already evolving. And it's perhaps not uh, surprising that uh, if you look into market research projections, and yes, they are to be taken with lots of grains of salt, um, but you can see sort of, uh, yeah, uh, triplings or doublings of the volume um, uh, here still uh, for sort of, um, yeah, for the upcoming years. Uh, that, that uh, market research uh, units see uh, in the books for digital health to grow further still. So if we look into what you can do with this platform, we really think you can use it for more general research purposes, uh, but we've come from the point of view of wanting to better ev understand, evaluate, actively research um, how various digital health support applications can work. And this is something that we think not only we need, uh, in Germany, you already have a refund model for digital health applications, the Digitale Gesundheitsanwendung, DIGAS, um, where lots of companies are coming up with digital health applications. They need to prove that they work and they need to consistently show that they keep working. And that is ex ex expensive and uh, a lot of effort to do. Uh, and tools like MORE can really make that much, much easier. So that is an interesting application use case beyond the sort of pure research um, case which we focused on with the initial development and with what we have shown so far. And of course, at the LBI DHP, we also continuously monitor and integrate latest trends in technology. We look at what's happening in AI, machine learning, what that enables in terms of precision medicine and various other technologies in particular. We are now getting used to having multiple devices that can do some sort of sensing around and making sort of sense of that and integrating all of it. Uh, and coming and the, the coming together of that data as patient generated health data are really interesting trends. And at the same time, this enables uh, also these these trends or we see new directions of working that that become possible now in a way uh, that it hasn't been possible so far. Uh, for example, for the very apparent challenge of really dynamic heterogeneities in, um, uh, for example, rehabilitation pathways. There's a fancy way of saying people are very different and they also change from time to time. Yeah, we are not consistent with within ourselves in terms of what we need, what we can do uh, from day to day and so forth. So we have long-term trends like growing older. Uh, we have medium-term trends like a certain illness for a couple of weeks. We have short-term stuff like I didn't take my medication, so my blood pressure is going to be higher or something like that. Um, so all this comes together to a very sort of 
complicated individual picture, which differs from person to person. And that means by default, if we want to really um, do uh, support uh, rehabilitation or even primary prevention in a way that is near optimal or as optimal as can be, we need to personalize. If we want to do that, we can give like nice personalization settings in our digital health applications. And we will quickly notice that nobody has time to do that in practice. Nobody has time to take care of that or wants to take care of it. So we need some level of automation. And then we're in this space of systems that are automatically adaptive. Um, maybe the healthcare experts helps define the boundaries within which that happens, uh, but they, they have these sort of dynamics to them. And then we need adaptive interventions and we also need to understand adaptive interventions better. And this is something that more can really do in a unique way. Uh, so this gets us closer to the vision of personalization or precision healthcare in a data-driven way. Um, yeah, so this is the sort of the overarching view why it's really exciting to have uh, such research and otherwise um, yeah, innovation supporting infrastructures for rich longitudinal and situated data collection. Uh, so it can accompany people through their daily lives, stay in the background as much as possible be interoperable with uh, other applications through API that's already possible. Uh, yeah, we want to implement that gateway for more proper, more serious uh, healthcare system integration. Um, and uh, therefore we can also start then peaking beyond the limits of traditional RCTs if we start looking into adaptive interventions and how they work into detail, which is something that with the modularity of the MORE platform, we can start to implement. I will skip over some complexity here. Uh, so just to summarize that we see lots of additional uh, potential use cases for the platform, even beyond the research use case in which we also have plenty of ideas how that could be done um, better still, uh, but it's already a quite a capable platform and it's also fairly usable um, considering um, the, the flexibility of the platform, um, I would say. Uh, so yeah, this is just to sort of uh, share some of our excitement about how this gets us a couple of steps further towards really accompanying personal or patient um, journeys with digital health and prevention uh, as the overarching uh, goal also of our institute. So this was me talking a lot, as I said, apologies again, um, but I want to really wholeheartedly thank all our contributors and funders. So obviously the state of Salzburg was uh, instrumental in um, getting the base funding for this, which went mainly to the software development, uh, went fully to the software development in this case. Uh, but we also had a uh, letter of interest partners who said, oh, this is an exciting idea. We want to use such a platform if it exists. I'm not sure what's happening here. This is not my computer. Who's sharing the screen? Or is it? It was my computer. Sorry for that. Um, so yeah, so we, we had our uh, LOI partners, uh, you see listed down here, and they contributed, for example, to the iterative development steps. And of course, the development partner, Redlink, uh, whom we are very happy to have found. Um, so yes, with that, um, I want to close this uh, and give time for questions or feedback. We had a intense workshop session before where we, of course, completely ran out of time of implementing all the various things that people wanted to try out. So we can also discuss that uh, for a little while. Um, so yeah, I would say thank you uh, for listening to this presentation and the uh, stage is yours for any questions and also the entire team maybe if you want, uh, we can scoot into this corner, the core implementation team for more. Um, if you can answer any, oh, they are on their computers mainly now. Okay, it's just Ali here, but anyway, yeah. If there are questions, then let's let's hear them, please. And I think I can stop the. Uh, uh, we can stop, stop the recording. The recording. Yeah. Yeah.